Tonight, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, a noble scientific pursuit or wild sci-fi conspiracy theory. Por que no los dos? But how will we hunt for life outside our solar system? What will it look like? And what has this all got to do with the lizard people? I'm Claire Riley for CNET. Welcome to Watch This Space. From the CNET studios in Sydney, this is your guide to everything on Earth you need to know about space. And tonight, we're talking about extraterrestrial life. But before all you InfoWars hypnotoad truthers come at me, I'm only interested in the science. All right, you still here? Good, because the government has been lying to you, the search for alien life is real, and those insane coded charts you've been making in your basement aren't crazy. Okay, well, they are crazy, but the first two things are true. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence, or SETI, is all about finding signs of intelligent life elsewhere in our galaxy. And it's not science fiction. Turns out, NASA has been searching too. In 1992, NASA established an official SETI program to use radio astronomy to find signs of life on other planets. But after just one year, Congress pulled its funding. But that search hasn't stopped. One of the main groups pushing it forward is the SETI Institute, which gets partial funding from NASA and has a team of scientists studying exoplanets, examining how planets were formed, and researching the astrobiology needed to support life on other worlds. I know what you're thinking. The hunt for alien life is real, but we're not overrun with little green men. What gives? Well, there's no need to go full Area 51 on me. No, that's some 41. Why does this keep happening? The reason we haven't become an alien ant farm is because despite all those party city costumes you've bought, alien life isn't actually that sexy. Let's take a journey through our search for extraterrestrial intelligence and all the ways that scientists have made it boring. First up, there's radio astronomy. We've been studying radio signals for signs of life ever since Marconi supposedly picked up transmissions from beyond Earth back in 1919. But one of the biggest discoveries came in 1977 from the Big Ear Radio Telescope in Ohio. Astronomer Jerry Eamon was picking through data from the Big Ear, no, that's not a gross way of saying he was using a Q-tip, and in that data he found a radio signal that lasted roughly one minute. He wrote the word WOW on the printout, because apparently he's a kid in a 1950s comic book, and it's been known as the WOW signal ever since. While this discovery sounds cool, it wasn't exactly some secret alien message. It was just a mash of encoded data represented by six characters. 6EQUJ5. Secugis? Sequagis? Yeah, it's effectively just an intergalactic vanity license plate. See kids, science can be boring. Next up, exoplanets. Hey, cool, planets just like Earth with the perfect conditions for life. Hell, these things even have their own NASA posters. Surely we'll find aliens there, right? Well, right now we search for exoplanets using instruments like TESS, the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. TESS finds planets by monitoring stars to see drops in their brightness, caused by a planet passing in front. As far as finding perfect alien planets, that's the equivalent of choosing your husband because he walked in front of the screen at the movies. Still, TESS has found more than 500 exoplanet candidates and, in April 2019, it found its first Earth-sized world. Now that's cool! Stars, they're just like us. Well, no, because while it could look like this, right now it looks like this. And that's not even the exoplanet, that's its star. Also, it's called HD 21749C. Science. Boring. Okay, so this is the alien episode. Surely we have something really cool and weird that we're doing in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Well, you're in luck because I have some 100% real, 100% bonkers ET factoids for you. Could I get something in a YouTube conspiracy theorist filter for this next bit? Thank you. First up, let's talk about the Pentagon's secret UFO program. All right, in 2017, the New York Times reported that the feds had spent $22 million on a secret program at the Pentagon to look into reports of unidentified flying objects. Apparently, Defense defunded the program in 2012, but it might still exist. Wake up, sheeple! You want more UFOs? Good. According to a Politico report from April 2019, the US Navy is working on procedures to report unidentified aircraft so, quote, incursions can be made to the, quote, authorities, which we all know is code for the Freemasons of building a secret UFO database. And finally, adjust your hearing membranes, lizard people, because it turns out 
we were the aliens all along. Remember back in 2017 when the Oumuamua asteroid floated into our lives? We now know it's an icy comet, but back then, Harvard scientists thought it could be a, quote, fully operational probe sent intentionally to Earth's vicinity by an alien civilization. Not only that, but some scientists believe interstellar objects like Oumuamua could provide enough insulation and radiation protection to preserve living organisms on an interstellar journey. It's a process called panspermia. Yikes. What if that's how life on Earth started? What if we all came here as tiny microbes on an asteroid smashing into Earth and we're just waiting to get reawakened by the hypnotoads? Makes you think. Of course, that's all the wildly theoretical and highly speculative stuff of science fiction films. It was just a comet, not an asteroid, and there are no lizard people. Hail Hydra. Regardless of the conspiracy theories, the SETI Institute says that we could find extraterrestrial intelligence within the next two decades. Turns out science isn't so boring after all. All right, that's it for this week's episode of Watch This Space. If you've enjoyed our program, then please remember to click the like button on your remote and subscribe to get more space news as it happens. I'm Claire Riley for CNET. Good night and Godspeed. Ah, oh, I had a hair on my nose that whole time. Oh, Just like... Okay. Yeah, I know the Sum 41 thing was a mistake that I made because I can't remember the name of Area 51. Still, I think there's a pattern here. So you'll notice that the frontal lobe is protected across here and these nodes actually collect the gamma rays that are trying to read your brain and redirect them to the displacement plate at the back so they can shoot everyone behind you. Um, I'm selling it for, what, I think that's worth about $420 on the internet.